We welcome you into week two of the Mike Turner Show. Hello, everyone. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman, head football coach, Mike Turner. Mike, uh, what a response from a loss last week to West Florida. You uh, traveled to Richmond, Virginia to face off against Virginia Union uh, and use a power running game to uh, do the job against the Panthers. A, a weird first half, but certainly some finish in the second half behind Antonio Wimbush, Sharon Jackson, and Toot Johnson. Well, we were excited about the way that our kids responded to that situation. Uh, uh, you know, you take another six hour plus bus ride, uh, you get up and you're playing in a place you never played in before. Great atmosphere for college football. Uh, so there were some unknowns going into that. Uh, but our kids, I thought, uh, for the most part, responded well, a lot, a lot better response, a lot better united response. Uh, and still plenty to work on. This is the second game of the year. Uh, we still got plenty to work on. Uh, I guarantee you, uh, we're, we're going to get better. And they're they're excited about the the future and what it holds for them. So it's, it's time to keep playing. This is a uh, weird weekend from a number of different avenues and reasons. Won the game, kind of had a weird feel to it in the first half. We'll touch on that a little bit later. But on the way back, uh, the bus is involved in a car crash, everybody okay, very thankful for that. Uh, but how did the kids handle that adversity uh, <laughs> coming coming on the way back? Yeah. Well, you know, we'd just gone to the restaurant and had, had a great meal and let them relax and spend what time they needed uh, to get plenty of fluid in them and those kind of things. And immediately you put those kids like that in that state, you put them on a bus, well, boom, they're out. Uh, you got a ball game on TV for them and all that. Most of them were listening to music and asleep. And so I was, I was with, uh, Richard Everett, our, our team chaplain and travel coordinator ahead of them, trying to make sure he stayed awake on the, on the drive <laughs> home. So somewhere about 45 minutes out, I get the phone call, and then there's the most hopeless feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. You can't turn around because you're not going to be able to get to them. Uh, we made all the calls. Everything was done right. The, uh, the straight police there were very gracious. They had the responders, first responders. All the kids were okay. Uh, the people in the other two cars are great. It, it's it's what a great blessing and uh, uh, a, a complete tragedy was avoided right there. Uh, it, it was very, very inconvenient time-wise for our yeah. kids, but it uh, it uh, shows you uh, what kind of coaches we got and what kind of kids we got because they handled it great, handled it, handled the situation great. Uh, we end up having to load up what we could on the other bus and send them home. And bless their hearts, they got here about 2:30 this morning. Uh, had things worked out for another bus come out of Charlottesville, they couldn't find a driver, so Premier had to take a bus out of Knoxville and drive mm -hmm. it all the way up there and pick those kids up. We had them at a exit where there was a 24-hour convenience store. We had pizza brought in for them and all those kind of things. Uh, the air conditioner was running on the bus, the TV was working, and they had pizza and uh, slip, and I think life was good for them. So <laughs> bless their hearts, they got here at 9.15 this morning. So it, it, from the part of it being uh, normal? Absolutely not. It was totally out of norm. Uh, <laughs> I feel very, very bad for our, our driver. Bless his heart. He's a great bus driver. Did all he could to avoid yeah. the deal. And you know, pe uh, cars in front of him, hydroplane, those kind of things. But he kept our kids safe, and uh, uh, that's, that's the number one goal. Uh, nice to be at home this week, I guess. Oh, <laughs> after <hallelujah>. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I don't know we get them on the bus this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we may have to call Uber for everybody who's on the bus. So, uh, yes, it's, it's good to be at home, and uh, I, I think we've had enough buses for a couple weeks. Uh, but it, it's exciting to be at home to, uh, to change the, the schedule, uh, change the, the whole deal right there. Uh, get this campus excited. It already is, and, and uh, Bill for some things this coming Saturday night. It's going to be Saturday night football at Mossy Creek, and it's going to be awesome. We'll actually talk football instead of bus crashes. Some good news for the Eagles, breaking down the first half and a win over Virginia Union when we get back after this on the Mike Turner Show. As your Touchstone Energy Cooperative, providing you dependable, affordable power is our first priority. Come rain or come shine. But you can also count on us for localized information on the latest renewable energy options. Information that's every bit as reliable as our energy. Learn more at touchstoneenergy.com. AEC, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Member-owned, service-driven. 
Back on the Mike Turner Show is Carson Newman Downs, Virginia Union, 33-29 to on the road at the second oldest college football stadium in America at Hovey Field in Richmond, Virginia. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head man, Mike Turner. Mike, uh, a first half that, gosh, felt weird. Uh, you dominated the stat sheet, but only up uh, 13 to eight, one of those common football scores, 13 to eight at the, the halftime break. Uh, what went down in that first half that caused it to be a little weird, a little wonky? Well, it, it was, I think we talked about yesterday about being bizarre, like bizarro world out of a Superman comic <laughs> book, but it's, you know, you take the first drive and go boom, 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 right down the field and execute, and you line up and kick some extra point, and we had a guy got so excited that, he ran off the field and we had a void and I was getting ready to call timeout. They snapped the ball, they block it. Then there goes that. That didn't help keep things on a normal edge right there. That got everything off, a little bit off track. And you know, you felt like the whole time, each drive you should go and score. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we expect every time. Uh, found some ways not to do that. Uh, you know, there at the end of the first half, we were ahead I, I, eight points and nine points, whatever, and we were trying to get one, one more in there, and we come out and missed a block, and the quarterback, I do believe, was throwing the football. His arm was going forward, but yeah. they called it they called it a fumble. So I'm not going to apologize for trying to go get another touchdown now. I'm not, not <laughs> going to apologize for that. Uh, so we're always trying to be aggressive. So uh, And then they end up getting a field goal out of that and kicked a, a great 45 mm-hmm. or whatever yard yeah. field goal to, to do that. So. It, it was a little. It was a little strange. Uh, gosh, the weather was fine. I mean, there, there's no problem there. Uh, uh, a little different situation, dressing and those kind of things. But hey, you're going to play at the top, then you got to handle all of those mm-hmm. other things. Those those things can't be a factor. And, and our kids, that's no excuse. I think they got squared away after halftime and played football like it's supposed to be played. Uh, threw the ball a little bit the first half, too, and did so efficiently. Derek Evans ends up 6 of 9 through the air for uh, not crazy yardage, 74 yards, but pretty much everything you did in the passing game worked pretty well. Sure, and, and we wanted to do that to try to try to loosen up their defense, and then we've got to do that more and more. Uh, you know, it, we, we got to the point there that we wanted to uh, control the football, keep our defense off the field. They got us those running backs are, 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 are pounders, and the quarterback was being a very efficient quarterback, running the football and throwing the little, the little ding things inside, and had some people running open in the secondary. To be honest, we mm-hmm. just didn't get them completed. So, uh, any time we can take the tempo, uh, and and move the football, keep a defense off the field, that's something you want to do as a coach. Talk about tempo. A, a, a weird game in another uh, regard because of how few possessions. Uh, there were, were normally uh, Carson Newman football game averages between 14 and 15 possessions. Only 10 times you touched the football. What do you make of that? Well, I think part of that was we kept it for long periods of mm-hmm. time. Uh, those possessions counted. They went a yeah. long way. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, the thing I was impressed, you know, we scored on five of those possessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh, we so far this season we've been perfect in the red, orange zone, the red zone. And you know, 100% scoring in that, uh, but you're but they had the football also, and and they, and they had drives as well. So, yeah, it was like you know, if you get it, you better hold on to it and make those drives count. And they were doing the same yeah. thing. In in all reality, they were doing the same thing. Eagles get the win over Virginia Union, up 13 to eight at the halftime break. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. Newman from their own 49, handoff. Wimbush on a dive left side. Wimbush stopping and starting along the left sideline. Burst free, foot race, dives for the pylon. Wimbush, no signal yet. Out at the one yard line, a 50 yard run for Antonio Wimbush. First and goal from the one, his 20th career run of at least 20 yards. First and goal from the one, split backs Wimbush and McCowan. Wimbush to the left, McCowan to the right. It's a trap, left side, McCowan and Drake McCowan walks in. Touchdown, Carson Newman, untouched over the left guard. And that drive is set up by the 50 yard run by Antonio Wimbush. McCowan polishes it off. First and 10 at the Virginia Union 40. One man in the backfield, that's Marcus Williams with Wimbush in motion now to the left side. Evans takes pitch left to Wimbush in space, left side. Burrows his shoulder, shoulders along the left sideline and gets pushed out of bounds down at the 30 yard line so far here today. Rushing four times for 22 yards. 
High snap, pulls it down, hands off Tobias Taylor, hitting the backfield and then waylaid as he comes to the right hashes by Antonio Henderson. Two tight ends in the game. Evans takes the snap, trap, left side, Williams burrows his shoulders, gets over the left hashes, and in for six. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Marcus Williams lights the lamp for the third time in his career and the first time this season. All right, those are the first half highlights. Eagles led Virginia Union 13 to 8 at the halftime break. Mike, uh, after the weirdness of that first half, what was the mentality, the message in the halftime locker room? <laughs> there really wasn't a whole lot of message to do. It just line up and play uh, and, and, and get the quizzical look off your face. <laughs> and don't worry about it, and, and let's just go play. There was not a great amount of adjustments offensively or defensively. Uh, it was more reassurance, and let's take control of it. And, and, and I really, even in the first half, didn't feel like either way, offense or defense, that we weren't in control of the game. Yeah, I, there, That's not it. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting to that part where you feel confident with whoever's on the field. and yeah, But in the, in the, at halftime, it was more of a just calm down and, Let's just go execute and let's just go play. And I want them to get sure that they understand to have a good time. Man, life's too short. Go out there and play football and play wide open and have a good time. The game kind of felt a little like that uh, Lenore Ryan game from last year. That one you trailed at the half, but it never felt like you weren't right. in control right. of the game. Exactly. Uh, I think you can get, you know, there, we were in a situation last week where we knew we should have won the game and we did it. And, and if you're not careful, uh, kids can know what the deal is in front of them, but you might get a little bit of a press going mm -hmm. on. And you don't want kids pressing. Uh, the more you press, the, the, the more you, you, you're not playing the way we want you to play. When we talk about playing wide open, uh, it, it means completely play wide open. Just turn it loose. You'll do the best you can. And don't hesitate and don't worry about something else. Just take care of your position. When, and we're getting there of that, and when we get to where that's – completely 11 orange helmets every time turning loose and doing that, we're going to be a really good football team. <laughs> Eagles get the job done in the second half. We'll break that, that down after this on the Mike Turner Show. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks. Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. Rolling on on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman defeats Virginia Union on the road. 33-29. to I'm Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head man Mike Turner. Mike, a second half where... Uh, you relied on the bread and butter uh, against the Panthers. Two tight ends, a lot of power runs, uh, and you only throw the football once uh, after halftime. What was the mentality, the mindset when you went to the double tight end look late in the second quarter and didn't uh, change from it? Well, we wanted to, to get them balanced up. You know, they, they, they were doing some adjustments uh, to trying to play the option. All right, simply that. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of take what they're giving you, but now what two tight ends does to a defense is does make them balance. Most defenses today are strong side, weak side, field side, mm -hmm. uh, boundary side, those kind of things. And you put two tight ends in a game, it does make people balance up. Now, it does affect different gaps. It does stretch them out a little bit more. Uh, so that allowed the power part of it coming in. And our kids have a great confidence uh, in the two tight end formation. Uh, our, our whole offense does. Uh, it, it, it does open things for the option part of it. It does open things for the power part. And we've worked two or three pass, four pass parts mm -hmm. of it for this game to have them ready. Uh, we'll just keep them for next week, all right? <laughs> so, uh, and it wasn't about, it has nothing to do with about throwing the ball, but, but you know, uh, you, you take what a defense is giving you. Their, their alignments to stop this gave us alignments that we wanted to run this against. And then late in the game, they made adjustments to do that. Well, guess what? You go right back and you run the veer, and there's a guy ripping it, and just like it's supposed to be done. Uh, you rely on some youth uh, late to Sharon Jackson. Uh, granted, he's had a year in the program, but sophomore steps up and takes some major carries late. But uh, 
the, the one that really sticks out is Toot Johnson. Uh, first collegiate carry comes on a drive where you're trailing for the first time all day. Well, why'd you go with your youth there? Well, it, it was, you know, Antonio Wimbush uh, is a warrior, no <laughs> question. Uh, but, you know, the key to this offense is you have fresh legs in there that you've got explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a mediocre takeoff won't get you anything in this offense. It's got to be an ex explosive style, and they got to come out of their blocks. Well, the, the best way to make that happen is keep fresh legs in there. And you go a series or two, and you go a series or two, and you're rotating people. Uh, they see what's happening. It, it makes the game a little bit better for them. But to put two Johnson in there and, and to watch him uh, turn loose and have some success, uh, he is going to be a special back at Carson Newman. Uh, great high school back, a great recruit for us to have in our program. And just to see the smile on his face and uh, be able to rip some things, catch a screen pass, uh, make a big play there on third down, uh, he's going to be a player. Defensively, uh, a lot of guys with double-digit tackle efforts. Darius Williams had 13, Desmond Farrell, a lot of good tackles in space, one-on-one -on -one with 10. Uh, Tamoris Coates is shaping up to have a fantastic senior season. We'll talk about that a little bit later. He's our Eagle spotlight. What about the job of the defense against uh, an offense that uh, you, you mentioned it earlier, could throw out two 250-pound fullbacks blocking for a 250-pound tailback? Well, right away when you see uh, a Darius having that many tackles, it scares you. Yeah, That's too many tackles. Th those backs are strong, powerful backs. We knew that. Uh, we had kids in position at different times. Maybe could have took some better angles at the linebacker level or even in the front four uh, that we allowed them to bounce outside. Uh, we allowed them to break one off in a B gap or whatever. Uh, and, you know, you got guys like Darius and Dez and those guys and, and, and Timo coming in and making plays. Uh, we, we, we've, we've got to keep those tackles up front a little bit better. But, but those guys are winners back there. There's no question about it. And they take great pride in what they do. And, uh, you know, you, you don't want a game like yesterday that, you know, where that group had some success doing some things. You don't want that to affect the, the, the confidence, you know, the, the effectiveness of that defense. And, but I, but I'm, I'm very proud of them, the way they rallied around each other. And, and, it, and football is a, it is a, it, it's a great sport. We all talk about what a great sport it is. But that part about being united, it takes everybody on that defense. It takes everybody on that offense. It takes everybody on those special teams to make it happen. Uh, it's the only sport I know of that one guy out of ten yeah. could maybe miss an assignment and it looks like everybody's failed. Uh, some good moments, too, for Ray Arterbridge. Uh, has a pick to stop a touchdown in the second half. Not to mention two tackles for loss, a couple more breakups. What about the job of the junior uh, defensive back out of South Carolina? Well, Ray, Ray's playing like we thought he would and could and, and wanted him to play. The, the, those guys have responded great in the secondary over there. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not that deep in that mm -hmm. position. You know, I, I think we're good too deep or close to that. And uh, those guys know they have to step up to handle the situations. They know they got a great group in front of them. Those seven in front yeah. of them are going to make their job a whole lot easier with pressure and those kind of things. And I think you saw that Saturday. Second half highlights hit the air now. And after that, we'll take you through the Eagles spotlight. This is the Mike Turner Show. Bias Taylor. Darius Taylor takes the snap. Hand off to Bias Taylor left side. Tobias Taylor is into the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Union. The Panthers have the lead. Johnson and Wimbush the split backs. Give to Wimbush on a trap right side. Spurts through a tackle at the midfield. Dashing along the right sideline. Forced out of bounds inside the Virginia Union 40 all the way down at the 33. Sumiel forces him out, but Antonio Wimbush, his third rush of the day of at least 20 yards. This one goes for 22 and a first down for the Eagles. It's a handoff, Wimbush on a trap right side. Wimbush to the house. Touchdown, Carson Newman. For the first time in 373 days, Antonio Wimbush has found Paydirt. And the junior running back pounds it into the end zone over right tackle from four yards out. 19-16, Eagles retake the lead. First and goal from the three. 
Evan Stakes, dive left of center for Wimbush. Wimbush twisting, turning, he's in! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Second score of the day for Antonio Wimbush. Second score of the half for Antonio Wimbush. And the Eagles are up 25 to 16 with 10.23 to play in the fourth quarter. Third and four, Evans takes trap right side Wimbush, bouncing it to the right side. Wimbush has an angle to the pylon. He's in! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Quentin Phillips set the edge on the right side, and Antonio Wimbush waltzes into the end zone. The hat trick for Wimbo. Wimbush and Johnson the split backs. Evans takes. QB bootleg to the left. Evans with loads of running room. Sprints free along the left sideline. Has first down yardage and knocked down by White inside the 15 at the 14. What a play call by Mike Turner. Dials up the QB bootleg. Those are the second half highlights from Carson Newman's 33-29 win over Virginia Union. Time now for our Eagle Spotlight. And this week, Michael Watrank puts it on linebacker Tamoris Coates. Senior linebacker Tamoris Coates has been one of the steady cogs to Carson Newman's defense. With 33 games under his belt in his career, the team's leading tackler has the tools and the experience to run the CN defensive huddle. College has flown by from my freshman year to now. Uh, I've grown a lot as a man, as a guy on the football field. Uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed to, to be able to play the sport every day. Uh, a lot of guys call me the uncle on the team. Uh, it's like I said, it's been a fun experience uh, just teaching those guys. That's how uh, when Sahin Stupart left, he taught me, brought me on his wing. Now I'm teaching these guys how to do things. Like a rite of passage, information has been passed down from each linebacking group. Coates is the current senior statesman with a style and work ethic that his position coach, Aaron Hutzel, has admired. He's great on and off the field, and he's the same person on and off the field. Um, but it's been great to see him grow up, you know, as time's gone along. He's hit a lot of adversity along the way, and it's, uh, it's been great to see him handle that. He's a great competitor. He's a great preparer. It didn't matter whether or not he knew he was starting or whether he was going to be the backup. He's going to be ready to go, and he's going to be ready to do his job. So I'm just really, really proud of him. Defensive coordinator Larry Slade recalled a game where Coates made an adjustment on the field to get the Eagles in the right defense. A student of the game, the middle linebacker is everything Slade needs as the anchor of the defense. He's very consistent what he does. Um, he is, he's very dependable. He's where he's supposed to be and, and uh, he's, a, he's a good football player. He's making plays. In our defense, our Mike Backer is that guy that sets the tone from a physicality standpoint, from a knowledge standpoint, to be able to make calls, to get us in and out of different defenses, and Tamoris has done a really good job doing that. Hutzel credited the attention and the preparation of the CN linebacker. A set of skills that Coates has had from day one in the program. You could always tell just from, you know, his heart, he was a little bit different. You know, even when he came in as a freshman, he was probably, you know, kind of wise, you know, beyond his years even then. Um, but the guys who were benefiting the most are the people, you know, who are around him, the people who he gets to teach to prepare the right way, to do things the right way, and more importantly, how he encourages people off the field. A breakout junior season where Coates produced three eight-tackle efforts open the door to a starting job in 2018. But his goals for his senior season are simple. Most importantly, I want to, on the football aspect, I want to, we want to win the championship this year. Uh, no other question about that. And as a man, you know, I just want to push these guys to be better men off the field as well. Life is bigger than football, and the aspect of life is, you know, how you deal with adversity each and every day and how we go about our days. While winning takes center stage between the lines, Coates has his attention on the lessons learned during his four-year stint in the orange and blue. He soaked in the knowledge of his predecessors and is imparting that acumen along, just like his teammates before him. For the Mike Turner Show, I'm Michael Watrang. All right, thank you very much, Michael Watrang. Mike Turner, what a, a season, what a leader that Timo is becoming here in his uh, final go-around at Mossy Creek. Absolutely. And you know, he's, we've talked before about him being the understudy there of Sahim and how those guys competed with each other, what great friends they are. Uh, so it, it, it is a guy that has sit back, has bided his time, has honed his craft. Okay, he's never been a never been a selfish person, not anything about him. And now it's his time, and he's stepped up to meet his time. And gosh, 
what a great compliment to a young man to say, hey, listen, there you are, there you are, now boom, that's you. And he hadn't backed up from that at all. Time now for conference play and at long last a home game. Big one. Uh, we've talked about it. Want to sell out, want to set a stadium attendance record. ESPN3 is in town. The defending SAC champs are in town, and the Wingate Bulldogs uh, should be a lot of fun with the Saturday night at Mossy Creek. Oh, I think so. I, I think it's going to be exciting for uh, for our football team. I think it's going to be exciting on our campus. Uh, I'm very, very proud of the way Carson Newman is uniting uh, to make this an event that everybody that's that's uh, any part of this university, any alum, whatever, friend of, donor, uh, can feel like this is a special time, and not just to say sell out the stadium, not just to have that, but hey, let's do this thing right and let's keep making it right. A football game at Mossy Creek ought to be a special event. Wingate, uh, you, you know what you're getting out of Joe Reich and the Bulldogs, some really good receivers, a defense that uh, has done a fantastic job against Johnson C. Smith and Fayetteville State the first two weeks. Uh, what do the Eagles need to do to be successful against the Wingate Bulldogs? Well, it's, uh, it's every week. It, it's Carson Newman versus Carson Newman first. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we have to take care of each other. We have to make sure that we're uh, assignment-wise, that we're, we're uh, intact, that we know what we're doing on the field, that, that we have a tempo that we need to play at, and that tempo is wide open on all parts of the game, not just offense, but defense and the kicking game. Uh, but, but know that uh, this is a special time. You know, we, we've gone through two non-conference games. Now here you are. It's conference time. This is the first game. Uh, you play under the lights at, at, on a Saturday night at Carson Newman. It hasn't been done in a long time, so we, we've got we've got a lot to be excited about. And, and but know the main thing, the main thing is to be here. The main thing, this is step one in the South Atlantic Conference, and uh, make sure we're giving our best shot. And uh, you know this this is why you play the game to start in the conference. Mike, pleasure as always. Uh, thanks for the time you were, you were right this week, a little bit more fun than last week. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, there's, no, there's nothing ever born with the Eagles, I can <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> he is Carson Newman, head football coach Mike Turner. I am the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Turner Show. Thanks for watching.